Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, today we will start with this uh, handbook of uh, MCQs, uh, which is uh, for the preparation of the uh, Australian Medical Council exam. Uh, AMC exam part one. Uh, this is one of the authentic book of uh, MCQ. So we will start from today. Uh, 48-year-old woman has had heavy irregular periods every three to four months for the last 10 years. She had a dilatation and curettage performed in what was hoped to be the premenstrual phase. As a part of the assessment of this problem, which one of the following if found on histological examination of the curatings from this D and C is most likely to be the cause of her bleeding pattern. A 48 year old woman has had heavy irregular periods every three to four months for the last 10 years. And then uh, she had a dilatation D and C performed uh, that was hoped to be the premenstrual phase as a part of the assessment of this problem which one of the following if found on histological examination of the curatings from this D and C is most likely to be the cause of her bleeding pattern this option uh, A which is normal secretory endometrium cystic uh, glandular hyperplasia atypical hyperplasia and endometrial polyp endometrial carcinoma so the correct answer is uh, uh, cystic glandular hyperplasia uh, this classically occurs when there is a preponderance of estrogen and usually no progesterone as is commonly seen in women with irregular in ovulators ovulatory cycle this is this is correct answer which is cystic glandular hyperplasia The second question is 63 year old man present with a history of swelling in front of his left ear which has been getting larger over the last four months with local discomfort. On examination there is a focal subcutaneous swelling 5 cm diameter in front of the tragus of the left ear as illustrated here. The swelling has a limited mobility in relation to the adjacent structures. The left angle of the mouth moves less than the right, giving an asymmetric wry mouth when the patient is asked to grin. Eye closure is symmetrical. Which one of the following is the most like likely diagnosis? The swelling uh, which is in front of the left ear, which I can zoom so we can all see it very clear. swelling in the in front of the left ear and this swelling which is subcutaneous swelling 5 cm diameter in front of the tragus of the left ear swelling is a limited mobility in relation to the edges and the structure this is not uh, mobile limited mobility is there the left angle of the mouth moves less than the right means I as I can uh, we can understand that this uh, might be this patient has is having a, a facial palsy symptoms as uh, the left angle of the mouth moves less than the right giving an asymmetric wry mouth when the patient is asked to grin so the which one of the following is the most likely diagnosis so from this picture we have to uh, uh, we have to uh, choose the correct answer. Uh, the answer, option A is Vardhan tumor, which is adenolymphoma. Vardhan tumor, which is adenolymphoma. Uh, option B is a mixed parotid tumor, which is pleomorphic adenoma of the superficial lobe. C is adenoid cystic parotid carcinoma. D is mixed parotid tumor, pleomorphic adenoma of the deep lobe. In B option, they have given the uh, pleomorphic adenoma, which is a benign tumor, and which is in the 
superficial lobe and here in the option D they have given they have mentioned this pleomorphic adenoma of the deep lobe of the parotid gland and E is the chronic parotitis so I think this adenoid cystic parotid carcinoma is the correct answer because mostly facial palsy uh, occurs with these uh, with this uh, malignant tumor so this is uh, malignant tumor so the patient has a focal parietal lump associated with the involvement of the buccal branches of the facial nerve causing a partial facial nerve palsy it is absence of previous surgery or radiations in the absence of previous surgery or radiation this combination is pathognomic of an infl infiltrative malignant parotid gland tumor other causes of the painful parotid lump include parotid duct calculus, mumps, bacterial parotitis, in which patient will have a uh, painful symptoms will be painful uh, parotid lump lump will be painful so parotid duct calculus, mumps, and bacterial parotitis, but such a non-malignant lien never cause facial nerve palsy. As we uh, we read the two options were the benign tumor means uh, pleomorphic adenoma uh, which is of the superficial lobe and deep lobe so we uh, these two both we have excluded and facial nerve palsy does not occur with benign tumor pleomorphic adenoma adenolymphoma is also benign which grows by slow ex expensive growth displacing but not paralyzing the nerve even with the lump is large a non-infective chronic parotitis does not cause facial palsy only malignant infiltrative tumor do this an adenoid cystic carcinoma is one of the number of types of malignant primary parotid tumor these tumors have a poor prognosis and are best treated by total per parotidectomy so in this case treatment will be total parotidectomy Despite radical surgery, the tumor have a tendency to local recurrence and lymph node metastasis. Even uh, red, with the radical surgery, the tumor have the tendency to local recurrence and lymph node metastasis. So they have given the chronic parotitis. If I can uh, close this picture, this is chronic parotitis and this is pleomorphic adenoma which is benign tumor. And this is carcinoid carcinoma of parotid. This is the correct option, correct answer of this question. So they might give the in the exam uh, only one picture, and then uh, they can ask so we can understand through this picture as well. But as we know that in the facial palsy uh, would be present with the with the uh, carcinoma of the of the parotid, not with the benign tumors. So remaining other options were benign 